His name is Nick Hayek. He's revered over there, the way Iacocca was in the 80s here. He's also a man who's turned around companies. Porsche, the car company, Gaumont, the film conglomerate, the Swiss train line. And a few years ago, the Swiss asked him to please take back the watch market from the Japanese. The Swiss watch market was completely gone in the world. He took it back and in the process did many interesting things. I went to see this fascinating source of business wisdom at his offices in Biel in Switzerland. Mr. Hayek, you're not only the man who got Swiss trains to run on time because they'd gotten out of that habit, you're not only the man who saved the Swiss watch industry, that's, that's uh, recognized everywhere, uh, against Japanese competition with Swatch, um, but you're also the man who tells Europeans, A, they shouldn't fear uh, Japanese competition and give up, and uh, B, that we're entirely on the wrong track in the West with the way we handle our economy, that we've lost the love of creating wealth and producing goods. Is that a fair assessment? Sure. It's a very fair assessment and uh, you have been doing it much better than I try to do it with much more words than you're doing. You know, saying it's a fact. It's a Western world, including the United States and Canada. We have lost the courage and the guts to overcome obstacles. And what we're trying to do is to make money uh, on Wall Street, or financial uh, money, without creating new products, new wealth without creating new production mm -hmm. uh, companies in our uh, countries and we're going uh, to Asia to produce. And this is not uh, for our future, it's very, very bad. And you have, uh, you, you, you kicked away, brushed away a lot of cliches that we, we believe are, are truths. For instance, uh, when you uh, came into the Swiss watch industry, you said, we are going to produce for less than it costs the Asians to produce. Now we imagine that's impossible because we have high salaries and so forth, but you actually say we're going to produce at 40% of the cost and put the rest into marketing, and you did it. Sure. It's not impossible. You take Switzerland. It's the highest uh, wage and salary cost country in the world. There is no other country that has a level of our salary. And we still can produce watches, very high quality watches, uh, consumer uh, watches that are at lower production cost than you can make them in Japan or in uh, Hong Kong. And you did it through technology and... Well, we do it uh, through, through using our technology and using our culture. By making uh, in a watch, instead of 150 parts to make a movement, we put 50. The time being, we created a new way of making higher and better quality watches, automating it, and adding to it our special culture. And we were very successful with it, with it, and we had the philosophy never to leave the lower segment of the market with a high volume production yes. to anybody else. We have to keep it in our countries, and that's a mistake that the automotive industry is doing in the United States and in Europe and everywhere else, and that's where the Japanese rightly have uh, found ways to, to go to steamroll practically everybody in this field. You hate the idea, for instance, that the British make Jags and Rolls Royces and only that, and, uh, and you say if they don't start, if, if, if all of us don't start making common products again, we won't even be making the luxury ones. Sure. It's, uh, it's not a question of hating it. I'm, I'm utterly unhappy with it because Great Britain practically has lost the automotive industry. They don't have any British company producing cars in the lower segment, volume cars, or the medium segment. They still have Jaguar and uh, Range Rover and Rolls Royce, and I don't know how long they're going to keep having it. They have Japanese and American and European companies producing in Great mm -hmm. Britain, but no British company is producing anymore. And those are tides, according to you, that can be reversed. For instance, there's not a single TV set assembled now in the United States. That's a stunning fact. Um, but you think that uh, it could happen again if the U.S. had the will? Yes, but not if the U.S. has the will as the entrepreneurs that exist in the United States take over and do it again. And not only financial people. If you don't calculate every three months how much money did I make and you want to have a growth in your profit every three months, if you can just operate like entrepreneurs do, with creativity, fantasy, uh, developing new products and having confidence in yourself. We are not more stupid than the Japanese. We are not less uh, hardworking than the Japanese. We have proven it for years and generations. I don't know why now. We have to start thinking that everybody else is better than we are. And I wonder what they think of you in Tokyo. You took the watch market back for, away from them, the world watch market. You now dominate in there. What do they think of you? Do you meet them? Oh, sure, I meet them. I have very many visitors coming from Japan, and I think we have mutual respect, and uh, we have mutual contacts, and uh, they respect you. 
You always respect a fighter that can fight like you do. And you don't have too many respect for people who just give up immediately. And uh, we have fantastic relationship with the Japanese companies, with the Japanese consumer. Uh, we have uh, our, our, our watches work very well in Japan and uh, we buy their watches and there's absolutely no problem. And this other idea that uh, we are going towards a service society and all this, all this industrial stuff is greasy and uh, not much fun and uh, doesn't really create wealth, there's another cliche for you. You don't believe that. Well, it's not a question of belief. It's a very dangerous cliche. If you are only a society of services, especially if you think about Europe, where we have absolutely no raw material, no, no wealth uh, in, our, in our countries, we have to create wealth. And you create wealth not only with services, because it's a very little amount of people who create uh, services and can live up with it. You have to export goods by adding to raw materials that you import special know-how, special more value, added value. And if you don't have this, your, your standard of living will go down. And you cannot live only with uh, services. So, for instance, companies, and I've heard it said from CEOs in Canada, companies in Canada that say we shall keep the head office with the brain matter in Montreal and Toronto and Vancouver, but all the ugly stuff will be done in Mexico and uh, Taiwan and so on. That's, that's the beginning of the end. This is the merchant, Souk, uh, attitude. I buy and sell and make money. Very good. Nothing against it. You can have it. But if you don't produce yourself, you're depending on the people who produce it. And that's where the wealth is made. They can stop it any time they want. And the minute we make this for many, many, many years, our people would just forget how we can produce things. And we're not anymore a producing country. We're only a buying country and a selling country. And you have this in many areas of Africa and uh, the Middle East, where the people don't produce too much, but they buy and sell. And uh, we get immediately in trouble. So, for instance, the Swiss, you'd not be content with the Swiss as the bankers of the world, as we imagine them sometimes. Oh, my God. We would be a poor Switzerland if we were only the, work, the banker of the world and do nothing else. This. Because the banks of Switzerland make more money with the industrial operations that we have here, our own industrial operations, our industrial clients who come to Switzerland to mm -hmm. buy and make business with us, our import and export situation, than with all these kings and... Uh, prime minister from I don't know where who come and put their money, conceal it in Switzerland. It's a very, very small amount of money that cannot help us. The belief of the American and Canadian and Western society that the only target you have in life is to make money and make it no matter how. And forgetting that you have to create things. You have to create industries. You have to create products. Taking junk banks, making big debts, buying company, and trying to dismantle them to pay back your debts, and whatever is left is your profit. Well, this is not good for the whole country. It might be good for one man, two men, three men to, to amass wealth, but not for the people, not for the country. And uh, we have to think about it, and that's where the entrepreneur is important. The one who literally takes the nothing who, and creates something. The, the guy who creates a new product, a new market, new development, new wealth, new plans, and make these investments.